we want to make a video about hiking clothes, kind of what to wear when you're climbing or hiking. Um, there's a lot of bad information out there. Uh, try to give you ideas for how to do it on a budget also. What's about best layers? What about base layers? All right. All right, <laughs> sorry. It's just his ladybug. First and foremost with base layers, you want them to be tight. Um, obviously because you know you're trying to stun on Instagram or something but uh, even a little bit more important than that is general comfort uh, if your base layer is loose and you start to sweat it'll let air get in there and you'll go from uh, the heat of your body to the cold wet sweat which is not a comfortable feeling uh, you don't want to be bouncing back and forth between that so you kind of want them to be tight it's not it's it's not guys. It's, let me get a if chair. you've done martial arts for any amount of time you would know it's not comfortable obvious expert here. You'll hear a lot about moisture wicking. Um, it's one of those phrases that, phrases that's kind of lost all meaning. It doesn't really mean anything anymore. I mean, your fabric is about 1 of an inch thick. It doesn't really have to move moisture that far. It's not really an accomplishment. What they call moisture wicking fabrics, um, they're actually better about drying faster. And that's what separates them from something like cotton. You want light fabrics, and they're gonna dry quickly. Synthetics tend to do this as do fabrics like merino and silk. For most cases, you're gonna to wanna to go synthetic. Um, synthetics are cheap, they hold their shape, um, they keep you warm when they're wet. Uh, all the benefits of the best expensive stuff you can get in a cheap synthetic. Decent synthetics can be had at Walmart for eight to 10 bucks. Um, this one here, starter brand it's like eight bucks at Walmart is just fine um, Costco sells some by uh, 32 degrees what do they call them weatherproof something like that they're like seven bucks I'd stay clear of those I don't like the shape of them they got baggy necks and those weird like fubu cuffs on the arm not really for me also they're extremely short almost crop top ish uh, and wide so if you're short and wide and you only have seven bucks that's a good option other than that I'd spend the extra dollar to get the starter or Russell ones um, Russell makes this one right here same idea it's another base layer hugs you tight and the fabrics a little bit softer the softer ones tend to be a little bit warmer the uh, shinier ones that are more like spandex a little bit cooler uh, another brand you can get online at a uh, major online retailer uh, is tsla i think at one point it was tesla until they realized there was a car company called tesla um, it has good heavyweight base layers which are good for keeping you warm uh, very comfortable very warm synthetics i think the synthetics are the best all around base layers hold their shape keep you warm um, they dry quickly they're light the only downside is odor uh, if you generate a lot of stink and we can try to buy hugs and kisses that works um if, you, if you're not into wearing deodorant or if you're gonna wear the thing for a long time Synthetics can tend to uh, smell pretty nasty. That's really the only downside of them. You do not need to buy an expensive synthetic. I've seen no advantage between an expensive synthetic shirt and a cheap one. Uh, you're just not gonna feel it when you're out in the weather. Merino is another fabric for base layers that people like. Um, it's great in theory because the merino sheep is supposed to be the uh, peak evolution of sheep. It's wool that doesn't scratch you. It does a similar job as synthetics, but it's more frail. Uh, when you wash it, you have to be super careful you put holes in it. Gross people, like through hikers will tell you that you don't need to wash merino wool. Um, again, that's for gross people. Uh, I wash my clothes. Icebreaker merino. Body fit 200. Listen, it's, it's very comfortable. It does its job, but the thing is it costs like 80 bucks. My if I was going to wear one for more than a couple days, that'd probably be it. It's going to be worn heavily and worked heavily. You can expect to see it pill and fray and get holes in it because merino wool is delicate. Cotton, uh, stay clear of cotton on the trail. Um, people will tell you that cotton is not moisture wicking and I don't know what they're talking about because anyone who wore Jankos in the 90s um, saw plenty of moisture wicking. You can start a climb with a cotton shirt looking fresh and crisp and all that and about an hour into it it's just going to look like you're homeless. 
Uh, they don't hold their shape. They get stretched out. Um, when they get wet, they get heavy. Uh, they don't keep you warm when they're wet, like wool and synthetic do. The only thing they're they're really appropriate for is when you're done with the hike, strip all that junk off, put on a nice fresh cotton shirt, and you're taken care of. There's additional blends out there. Blends are fads that come and go. Uh, today's blend won't even be around tomorrow. They'll blend merino with, uh, you know, pulled pork. There's a company called Rab that had a blend called Miko, which was merino and uh, chocolate or something. And uh, they don't even have it on their site anymore. Uh, these blends come and go. If you're gonna get merino, get merino. It's just fine if you want to pay the money and you want to live in it for a little while. But other than that, let's get a synthetic. Meddlers. What about mid layers? Mid, oh sorry. Mid layers are a little warmer and thicker. Uh, depending on how hot or cold you usually get, a mid layer can actually be an outer layer. For me it usually is. Like I said, I generate heat pretty easily, so it's seldom that I'm doing anything active and need three layers. A good mid layer, uh, I really like these. Condor Base 2. Um, Condor Base 2 is Condor's take on the Army Poly Pro. Um, Army Poly Pro was uh, straight trash and it didn't fit right, it didn't really keep you that warm, uh, it pilled up and got nasty real quick, uh, but Condor's kind of perfected it. It's a really good piece of gear, about 21 bucks. 21 bucks is too much, uh, pretty much any poly fleece, you know, I mean, you can get for 12 bucks at Walmart or something, simple poly fleece, they do you just fine as a mid layer. What about outer layers? Uh, what about outer layers? For outer layers we're talking packable down jacket or polyfill uh, or a rain jacket. This is an Eddie Bauer actual real feather down jacket and you can tell because the feathers are popping out. In feather down jackets the feathers pop out of them uh, and you get to pay for that privilege you know for a hundred something plus bucks. But you can get the polyfilled ones too. They keep you just as warm as the top you won't know the difference. Uh, weatherproof 32 degrees uh, they typically come out with new ones every year for about 30 bucks. They do just fine as outer layers. And rain jackets. Uh, the rain jacket that is light, packable, waterproof, and breathable doesn't exist. They all promise to be that, but they're not. Like this one here promises waterproof, breathable, lightweight, and packable. It's some of those things. It's uh, lightweight and packable. Is it breathable? No. Is it waterproof? No. <laughs> I mean, if you want genuine waterproof, you have to buy something that's uh, either completely sealed up like a rain slicker, um, or you have to get something that's treated with something that's impermeable by water, and those things are not generally lightweight and packable. If you're looking to stay dry, you also have a conundrum where if you get something that's truly waterproof, you're just going to sweat on the inside. So you're going to be wet on the inside anyway. So typically speaking, I might have one on me, but I very seldom take it out unless I'm going to be still for a little bit. Um, and then I might put it on. But for what they are, I think these 32 degree waterproof rain jackets I sell them at Costco, uh, like 30 bucks. They're just fine for what they are. They're not completely waterproof though. And there's um, a... You know, if you're envisioning yourself standing in a hurricane, you know, laughing at your neighbors, that's not what it's for. What about pants? Pants. Pants. Oh, I mean pants. What about pants? I keep harping on Costco and Walmart here, and I'm going to keep doing it again. So what you're looking for are called travel pants. They are synthetic. They're stretchy. Yep. And they're lightweight. If they get wet, they dry quickly because they're light. And they are good for agility moving around. They're like 20 bucks at Costco. And these ones are the Union Bays. The only difference between the expensive and the cheap ones is how they fit. You get an expensive set like from Eddie Bauer at the store proper, they'll probably fit good and look good. Uh, the ones from Costco that are 20 bucks, they fit like junk. These ones right here from Walmart, they're the Wrangler Outdoor Tech or something. These ones I think are like $17.99 and they fit a little better which is good. And they're long enough to accommodate my legs, which is good too. Oh yeah. Hey, give me. Ew. That's mm -hmm. like rocking. <laughs> right. <laughs> Both of these pants say they're primarily nylon, like 95% nylon, uh, with a little bit of spandex in the waist. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're looking for. Lightweight and dry easily. Mm -hmm. I usually need a 36 length, because I've got legs like Dalsam. And most places where you buy cheap pants don't carry 36 length. If you get your pants at something like 
Eddie Bauer or North Face, you can probably actually get a 32, 36, which is what I wear. Um, oftentimes I have to settle for a 34, 34, which is too short and too wide. Travel pants are not warm. They're not designed to be warm, they're designed to be light. Um, they do fine for me, because uh, I can do shorts year round on trails. But if you need warmer, if you're gonna be outside in the snow, not moving very fast, uh, a base layer, synthetic base layer is just fine. Uh, these are the Russell ones. Again, Walmart, eight, nine bucks. Um, just a pair of slim long johns. Merino's probably a little bit better for pant base layers than they are for tops because you don't have a, uh, a ruck or a pack on your back grinding into it. Um, these ones here, Icebreaker Merino. They've been out with me a few times. Totally fine. Get snow on your pants. Doesn't matter because your leggings are doing the work keeping you warm. Costco will sell 32 degree. Uh, weatherproof leggings, um, they're terrible, they, they fit horribly, and they hardly have any waist, so, um, you know, the waistbands that clothes have, they don't really have a functional waistband, so I uh, advise against them. Snow pants, if you're going to be hiking, stay away from snow pants. Uh, maybe if you're going to be snowshoeing slowly with kids uh, and you have legs that get cold real easily, Okay, but uh, unless you meet those exact criteria, I would stay clear of snow pants for anything other than rolling around in snow or sledding or something. Socks are a no-brainer. Go to Costco, uh, get a set of these right here. Four. What about socks? There we go. What about socks? Four outdoor trail socks, Kirkland brand. They have them in uh, men's shoe size 10 to 13. I wear 14 and I can stretch them over my feet. It's fine. Let's see here. 72% merino wool. Uh, you don't want synthetic socks that make your feet stink. Um, maybe they'll keep you warm, maybe they won't, but they'll make your feet sweat more and stink more. You don't want that. Kirkland four pack of merino socks is really probably the best deal in outdoor clothing there is. Um, because if you go this route where you buy a single pair from Smart Wool or something like that, you're probably looking to pay about 20 bucks for one pair. Uh, I would keep a pair or two of these on hand though for the summertime when you need a lighter layer because um, these Costco Merino ones are quite a bit thicker. Really good for the winter. These ones are a little bit thinner, better for the summer. I've stressed being thrifty up until now. Um, I would say that the point where you don't want to be thrifty is with your boots. Uh, you don't want to go cheap with your boots. You want to get yourself a good pair that fits you correctly. Uh, maybe even a little bit extra. Like I said, I normally wear a 14 and I get 14s in boots. And that does me pretty well. When you're climbing back down, gravity's pushing your toes towards the toe of the boot, uh, and that will create blisters and sore spots if you don't have any extra room. A good pair of boots will uh, keep you from getting blisters. And I've been on a lot of mountains and done a lot of rough marching when I was in the army. And <laughs> everybody's gangster until blisters come, and then it's show's over. Also, I would put the money you saved into a quality pack. Um, buy once, cry once with bags. If you get a cheap bag, it's going to be uncomfortable and you're just going to replace it anyway. Head down to REI and get yourself fit for a backpack. Um, there'll be a guy there with one of those, uh, you know, the wax mustaches. He'll fit you up, size you for the bag, and tell you what you are. I know I've said this before, but I thought, uh, hey, look, man, I'm 6'2, I'm a large, you know, and he's like, uh, nah, buddy, we got to fit you for a bag. So he fit me for a bag and I found out that I'm actually a medium, small, medium torso. Uh, again, legs like dolls them. So uh, that was when I learned how to actually fit a pack to me. Hope this video has been helpful. Uh, I may have to redo it just because a game of basketball popped up behind me. So, all right. All right, we're up. Good video you're making. Thanks.